Yeah. Hello, friends. Uh, today we are going to discuss with SJF preemptive. So last class we discussed with you non preemptive for the same table. Okay. I showed that what do you mean by preemptive. So preemptive is nothing but which is going to shift from one process to the other process based on the based on the algorithm. Or you can say that it is going to interrupt the running process and reallocate the process to higher priority process. That is your preemptive. This SJF, whenever there is a preemptive, it can also be called as, keep in mind, shortest remaining time first. The question may be also asked as SRTF, calculate SRTF for calculating average waiting time and turnaround time. So SRTF is nothing but SJF preemptive. Okay. So consider there are four process and arrival time is as follows. Okay, whenever they give arrival time, what happens is every time the first process is going to execute until your second process arrival time. Okay, then you are going to check the shortest time. You are going to repeat this. Okay, until what? Until the last process. After that, you go with what? Non preemptive. You can just see here at 0 second. Okay, let me just say that this is your seconds of uh, process and your first time. At 0 second, which process can execute? That is your P1. It is having how much first time is 8 seconds. So I will write the Jan chart. I okay, will write the Jan chart. Okay. So first, at 0 second, which can execute? Only your P1 process came, so it can execute 1 second. If it is going to execute 1 second, until what? Until your second process arrival time, that is your 1 second. So if it is going to execute 1 second, remaining is how much seven. So at 1 second, which all process can execute? At 1 second, your P1 can execute, your P2 can execute. See here, at 1 second, your P1 can execute, your P2 can execute. What is the first time of your P1? Remaining is 7 and P2 first time is how much here? 4. In these two, we is having shortest time to make it how many seconds here? Next arrival process arrival time is what? Next process arrival time is what? 2 seconds. To execute 2 seconds, which is having shortest time? Your P2. If it is going to execute for 1 second, remaining is how much here? 3. Which can execute this? Your P2 can execute for 1 second to make it what? 2 second. Hope you are getting with this. At 2 second, which all process can execute? P1 can execute, P2 can execute, P3 can execute. Okay. So P1 is having 7, P2 is having 3 seconds and P3 which comes is having how many seconds here? 9 seconds. Okay, until what? Until your next process arrival time, that is your 3 seconds, to make it 3 seconds. Okay, which can execute? Which is having shortest time? Your P2 is having shortest time. How many seconds has to execute? 1 second. If it is going to execute 1 second, remaining is how much? 2. So, which can execute this? Again, it can execute your P2 itself to make it what? 3. Okay, hope you are clear with this. Okay, at P3 second, your P4 process will enter. So, at 3rd second, which one can execute this? P1. P2, P3 and P4. P1 remaining time is 7, P2 remaining time is 2, P3 is having 9, P4 is having how much time? Your 5 seconds. Right? After that, no more process is there, so let's stop. After that, just go with what? Non preemptive. Out of this process, which is having shortest time? 7, 2, 9, 5, which is having shortest time is P2. It is going to execute 2 seconds. That is, if it is going to execute 2 seconds, how much it becomes? 3 plus 2 is. 5. P2 done. Next shortest time is which one here? P4. That is 5. So P4 is going to execute how many seconds? 5 seconds will execute. 5 plus 5 is how much? 10. Next remaining P1 and P3. Which is having shortest time? P1 7 seconds. So if it is going to execute 10 plus 7 is how much? 17. Done. Last process remaining is your P3. How much time it need? 9 seconds. So P3 if it is going to execute what is the time it requires? 17 plus 9 becomes what? 26. If you can add 12, 21, 26. If you add the total bus time, it should come at the end of this thing. That's it. Hope you are clear with this. So this is what you need to remember. Okay. Every process, zero process is going to execute until the next process arrival time. You are going to repeat. You are going to check until what? Last process arrival time. After that, you will go with what? Non-preemptive shielding algorithm. That's it. Again, our completion time. P1. Here it is there, here it is there. You need to consider which one, the rightmost one. The completion time of P1 is how much? 17 seconds. 17 seconds. Next P2, here it is there, here it is there, here it is there. So which one you need to consider? Rightmost P2 is having how many seconds here? Completion time is 5 seconds. Okay. 
Next P3. See completion time is how many? 26 seconds. Okay. P4. Here it is there. Completion time is how much? 10 seconds. Hope you are getting. And now turnover time. Completion time minus arrival time. 17 minus 0 is 17. 5 minus 1 is 4. 26 minus 2 is 24. 10 minus 3 is 7. Now waiting time. How to calculate? Turnaround time minus burst time. 17 minus 8 becomes 9. 4 minus 4 becomes 0. 24 minus 9 becomes 15. 7 minus 5 becomes what? 2. So this is the thing. And now how to calculate average waiting time? Okay. P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4 divided by total number of processes is 4. Okay, I'll just write straight away. 9 plus 0 plus 15 plus 2. Divide by what? 4. This gives your average turnaround time. Waiting time, sorry. Average turnaround time. 17 plus 4 plus 24 plus 7 divided by 4. Okay. I'll just calculate how much I'll get. So if I add, you'll get 26. 26 divided by 4 is how much? 6.5 milliseconds. Average turnaround time, if you add all these things, you'll get 52. 52 divided by 4 is 13 milliseconds. Hope you understood with your SJF preemptive. So we'll solve one more problem. Okay, based on your SJF preemptive. Yeah, we'll continue with one more problem. Same thing, consider the following table consists of four process and arrival time is given 0, 1, 2, 4. Okay, and I'm calculating SJF preemptive itself. Shortest remaining time first. Okay, so first thing, chart, Jan chart, I'll write. Which starts with what? Which starts with 0 second. Same thing I will write here. Seconds. Which process and the burst time. Right. You can just see here. I said whichever process arrival time is 0. It is going to execute until what? Second process arrival time. At 0 second, only process that can execute is what? Your P1. Having burst time is how much? 5. It has to execute until what? 1 second. If it is going to execute 1 second, remaining time is how much here? For P1 is 4. So which can execute is? P1 can execute for 1 second. Hope you are clear. At 1 second, which process can execute? Your P1 can execute, your P2 can execute. At 1 second, your P1 can execute, your P2 can execute. P1 is having burst time 4 remaining and P2 is also having what here? 4. Here, you just see here, already 1 second executed, that's why it is 4. Two process is having same burst time, at that time you will follow which one? First come first, or which came first? P1 came first. It has to execute until what? Until your second second. So, to make it second second, which can execute? P1 or P2? P1 can execute for 1 second. If it is going to execute 1 second, remaining is how much here? 3. Again, it is going to execute P1 itself for 1 second. So, 1 plus 1 is 2. Hope you are cleared. At 2 seconds, which all process can come? P1 can come, P2 can come, P3 can come. So again, P1, P2, P3. Here, again 3 seconds, 4 seconds. P3 is having how many seconds here? 2 seconds. 2 seconds. Hope you are clear. Until what? See here. It may not be in sequence. Next is how much? 4 seconds. So to make it 4 seconds, which process can execute? P1, P2, P3. Which is having shortest time? Your P3. It has to execute 2 seconds. It is having only 2 seconds. So it is going to execute what? 2 seconds. P3 is going to execute 2 seconds to make it what? To make 4 seconds. Then what? P3 completed. At 4 seconds, which all process can execute? P1 is remaining. P2 is remaining. P1 is 3 seconds. P2 is 4 seconds. And at 4 seconds, one more process will come. That is your P4. It is having burst time of how many seconds? Burst time is 1. Now, no more process is there. So, after that, I will go with what? Norm preemptive. So, in these three things, which is having shortest time? P4 will execute for 1 second. So, P4 will execute for 1 second. It becomes what? 5. Hope you are clear. Next, among this, which is having shortest time? P1 is going to execute for 3 seconds. So, P1, if we are going to execute 3 seconds, 5 plus 3 is what? 8. Remaining only P2. If it execute 4 seconds, P2 if it is going to execute 4 seconds, 8 plus 4 is what? 12. That's it. So if you can, you can add all the 6. 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's what you are getting at the 
end of the particular table. That's it. Now completion time. P1 here it is there, here it is there, here it is there. Completion time is what? Eight. P2 here it is there. It is what? Twelve. P3 here it is there. It is what? Four. P5. Sorry. P3 done. P4. It's how much here? It is five seconds. Hope you understood. Now turn around time. Completion time minus bus time. So eight minus zero is eight. Twelve minus one is eleven. 4 minus 2 is 2, 5 minus 4 is 1. Now waiting time. Turnaround time minus bus time. 8 minus 5 is 3. 11 minus 4 is uh, 7. 2 minus 2 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. That's it. So average waiting time becomes your 3 plus 7 plus 0 plus 0 divided by 4. That is 10 by 4. That is something you will get. 2.5 milliseconds. Right. Now average turnaround time, how much you will get? 8 plus 11 plus 2 plus 1. So divided by what? 4, 19, 20, 21, 22 by 4. So how much you will get? 20. 4.5 something millisecond you will get. I will check out. Okay. You will get around 5.5 millisecond. So this is your SJF preemptive. It can also be called as what shortest remaining time pass. So you need to execute first process going to execute until your second process arrival time. After that, you will repeat until what last process. You will repeat until what the last process. After that, you will go with what SJF non preemptive. Thank you guys. Hope you understood. In short, we will discuss the same table SJF non preemptive. So whenever SJF non preemptive, non preemptive. It is not going to shift from one process to the other process until the total completion. So it is going to execute. So shortest job first. Which is the shortest job? P3. But it comes into queue only after 2 seconds. So you can't do that every time. Which of process which is having arrival time 0. That only will execute. So 0. P1 will execute for complete time. That is your 5 seconds. After that. Which is having shortest time? Your P4. For 1 second. So P4. See 5 plus 1 is 6. Done. Done. Next remaining is P2 and P3. We say shortest time P3. That is 2 seconds. 6 plus 2 is 8. Done. And only left out with P2 process 4 seconds. So 8 plus 4 is how much here? 12. That's it. Completion time now. Check it out. P1 it is 5. P2 it is 12. P3 it is 8. P4 it is 6. Okay, turn around time. What to calculate turn around time? I will return here. Completion time minus arrival time. 5 minus 0 is 5. 12 minus 1 is 11. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. Waiting time. Turn around time minus burst time. 5 minus 5 is 0. 11 minus 4 is uh, 7. 6 minus 2 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. So average waiting time is what? 0 plus 7 plus 4 plus 1 divided by total number of processes is 4. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 12 divided by 4. So it gets what? 3 milliseconds. Okay. Average uh, waiting time. Average turnaround time. So 5 plus 11 plus 6 plus 2 divided by 4. So here how much you will get? Uh, 16, 16, 22, 24, 24 divided by 4. So how much you will get is? 6 milliseconds. Average turnaround time is what? 6 milliseconds. So this is your SJF non-preemptive. Guys, hope you understood with your SJF preemptive as well as non-preemptive.